planet Neptune, a brilliant deep blue. Before Voyager, we knew Neptune as a lonely trace of light. But the tiny probe showed us a faraway world in close-up. Astronomers say we will start to know the heavens even better as the century that spawns space travel comes to an end. We're going to be awash in new scientific discoveries, new scientific data, new scientific interest. Planetary exploration is back in vogue. Last May, Space Shuttle Atlanta sent the Magellan probe hurtling toward Venus. We could see new images of the red-hot planet by the end of next year. Planet Jupiter gets a call from a probe named Galileo. Galileo is set for an October launch. The complex spacecraft will circle Jupiter for two years, beginning in 1995. For a bird's-eye view of the universe, NASA plans to put a telescope in space next spring. How far will it reach? Some say it could give us a look at the beginning of time. And there's more. NASA plans unmanned trips to Mars, the Sun, and to at least two asteroids. Plans already stretch into the 21st century. We call it the second golden age of space science, the first one being the, the first era of space science back in the Apollo times. But this is now the second golden age of space science, and if we have our way, it's an age that's not going to end. One other note, NASA has tentative plans to send a spacecraft to the sun by what sounds like a roundabout route. The so-called Ulysses probe would first make a flyby of planet Jupiter. Joining us now to talk about some of the things that we might be seeing in the future as space exploration continues is Dr. John Logsdon. He is a professor at George Washington University here and is director of its graduate program in science, technology, and public policy. Dr. Logsdon, you just came back from JPL in Pasadena. You're wearing a, a Voyager pin that we've seen on television so much. Uh, did we get our money's worth from this? I think it's, it's an unarguable that the American public, the world, got not only science data, but images that haven't been seen before. Seeing what's over that uh, kind of uh, next hill uh, is something that's very human in character. No other uh, species does that. When we have a successful mission like this, it, it gets the mind going toward tomorrows. If we can do this, what can we do tomorrow? And we want to talk about the future with you. What do you see as next? Well, already on the drawing boards and up for approval are the set of missions that have just been described, automated missions to do science, to do exploration, going back to Venus, to Mars, to take closer looks, out to Galileo, and then there's a mission called Cassini to go to Saturn, one that wasn't mentioned called Comet Rendezvous to fly by the sun with a, uh, with a comet uh, at the turn of the century. And then Mr. Bush, President Bush, on July the 20th, asked for a sustained commitment to human exploration of the solar system, return to the moon to stay, and eventually uh, human journeys to Mars. So that's all what's available if we choose to do it. Do you think we have the national will to? Uh, we stuttered so much in the space program in recent years since uh, Johnson really downhill. Now we're back at gee whiz again. Everything that we see is making us say, gee whiz, we want more. That's right. Uh, we went to the moon and then essentially quit an exploratory space program. Even Voyager is one of the last remnants of that early commitment to exploration. It's a dozen more years old. That's right. Uh, I mean, the mission was planned in the late 60s. Uh, we're now planning those next round of exploratory missions for this decade and beyond. We need a space station as kind of a staging base, particularly for the human uh, movement out away from this planet. So there's plenty of stuff there. Is there a national commitment in an uh, era of budget uh, scarcity? Well, the budget director thinks so. Dick Darman says this is the kind of investment in the future the country has to be making. Do you think that we'd be more likely to do it by cooperating with other nations, joint ventures, even with uh, the USSR? Well, I think that, that as other countries become more and more capable in space, uh, some form of cooperation is inevitable. It's the right thing to do. Even Vice President Quayle Friday at JPL said, we, we're going to cooperate not because it's going to save us money, but because it's the right way. This is a human enterprise, not necessarily an American enterprise. Cooperation with the Soviets is a little more complicated because we're still adversaries. Peace hasn't totally broken out yet. If it does, this may be one of the areas in which we can shift our focus of col uh, collaboration into something that we can do together uh, for the planet. 
You mentioned earlier the commitment of President Bush. I guess in October he's coming up with this plan you mentioned. You mentioned Dick Darman being very excited about space. And the Vice President, Dan Quayle, is in charge, the director of the Space Council. Grade him for me as a professor. Well, the Space Council gets a strong A for the work it's done so far. It's, it's taken on three issues, rescuing a failed policy with regard to our Earth observation satellite, keeping alive the aerospace plane program, and now developing this exploration initiative for the President's approval. Uh, Mr. Quayle has engaged himself totally in that process. He's committed himself to learning this area. He hasn't worked in the area before. He's clearly trying to exercise leadership in an important area for the future. Have you seen him exercise boldness? Well, to get the president, who didn't have to, to sign on to a request to the country and to the Congress for a sustained multi-decade uh, commitment to human exploration with American leadership, I think is a pretty strong uh, set of actions. It wouldn't be fair, as we leave the future and our time runs short, to let you not say anything about Voyager, because uh, it brings out the little boy in me, and uh, a man of your talents and expertise, it must have brought out some of the little boy in you. What wonder did you get from it in our last few seconds? Well, we are unique in being able to share in discovery. To see things as they are discovered is something that our technology has given us the capability to do, and that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Dr. John Logsdon, uh, the president, the uh, director of the space and science uh, regime at George Washington University. Thank you for coming to be with us.